about Craig Shergold. He's that English kid with the brain tumor. Yeah, he's the one who's getting all those cards. I got a chain letter a couple months ago. Well, something unusual happened during the operation. People are saying it's a miracle. Of course they are. You know, a guy goes to medical school for 10 years, spends an obscene amount of money getting his diploma. The operation's a success. They call it a miracle. Word is leaking out that it's a genuine miracle kind where God intervenes. Listen, I don't believe in God. You know that. God is just a crutch for people who can't, can't manage, manage their, their own, own lives. lives. That's why I'm sending you. I want a skeptic. I only do hard news. This is hard. I want you to find out what happened. If there's a hole in this story, I want you to find it. The family's back in Karshalton. You must be Josh. Come on in. Craig's a good looking boy. Oh, that's Steve, my oldest. He's almost 20 now. Hmm. Uh, there's Steve, his wife Sharon, and their baby Kylie. Now, this one I know is Craig. Yeah. That's the photo that got things started. Mrs. Shergold. Marion. When Craig was little, did he seem to be healthy? Oh, yes. Craig was a bundle of energy. As soon as he could walk, he was kicking a football around the house. <laughs> I was working for the Chelsea Football Club, and Craig wanted to grow up to play on the team. He's a fanatic about Chelsea. And what was your first indication that he wasn't well? Ooh. I kept having this dream.
same dream. Yeah. Uh, it's just a dream. I know. Mr. Shergold. Ernie. Ernie. Ernie, at that time, did you consider yourself to be a religious person? No. I mean, we went to church on Sundays, but, uh, you know, everybody did. Hey there, Shorty. You sound pretty good. You ought to be a singer. Now I'm gonna be a comic. I thought you wanted to be a football player. I do. I'll be a comic when I'm old. Around 30. <laughs> so you were Craig's soccer coach. You call it football, yeah. Right. Before Craig went to the hospital, did you notice anything unusual? I did notice he was running at an angle. Run forward! Forward! Uh. You all right? Yeah. I got tripped by a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> We were very busy that Christmas. Steve was studying for his firefighter's exam. Ernie did a lot of overtime. I was baking from the minute I got home from work. No peeking. No peeking. You ready? Open your eyes! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Oh, wow! This is the best Christmas I've ever had. We thought you'd like it. Smile, everybody. Hey, don't you want to ride your new bike? Maybe later. I'm so tired. He's always tired these days. Too many parties. He'll be fine. I kept an eye on him for the next few days. I do see a slight infection. I'll give him an antibiotic. Would you take Craig into the next room and see how tall he's grown? I know this may seem a strange question, but didn't you lose your mother recently? Yes. Was Craig close to her? Very. Well, it's possible that this is Craig's reaction to losing her. His last two visits, there was nothing in his ears. And this time, the infection is so slight, I'm surprised he even feels it. He may just need time to recover. Craig isn't a whiner. It's very hard to lose someone that you love. This either for you? No, it's for my son. Oh. Hmm. I don't like what I see. What do you mean you don't like? I think you should take him to hospital. 
stronger antibiotic. He keeps saying there's water in his ears. Well, sometimes an infection feels like that. I've been to hospital. Oh, good, good. What did they tell you? They gave me this. No. No, they didn't see your son belongs in hospital. Something the doctors missed. Two different doctors in two different places have both said the same thing. But the chemist seems so sure. Well, he doesn't have half the training the doctors have. What about my dream? Marion, please, let's just give the medicine a chance to work, eh? Ernie, I know something's wrong. I know it. Marion. You know what the doctor said about Craig missing your mum? It's been even harder on you, especially these last couple of months. So just give yourself a bit of time, eh? Howdy, partner. Feeling better? And I'm incredibly hungry. Great. How about some cornflakes? Yeah! How's your earache? Gone. After breakfast, I'm going to go out on my new bike. That sounds like a good idea. That was good. Vomited like an explosion. Your name, please. Hurt uh, Shergold. Greg. I'll see what I can do. Want to lie down? Get a doctor right away. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be fine. All right then, Craig. Let's try it again, all right? Same thing. Full finger to the nose. Best you can. 
Okay, see this line on the floor? I want you to walk along the line and place one foot in front of the other, okay? Oh. Sorry, I've seen what I wanted to see. I'm going to order a brain scan at St. Helens. You came in just for Craig, didn't you? Oh, no, no. They called you in from a dinner dance. No, not to worry. We'll take good care of him. You have to stay here. Mommy, it's just x-rays, like the dentist. I think. I know what it is. It's meningitis. I've been reading about it in the papers. Why didn't I see it? He's got all the symptoms. Headache, sickness, tired. Why didn't the doctors see it? Kids, I'm not that dying. Marion, please, let's wait for the results. It's meningitis, isn't it? Your doctor will give you the results. Please, just tell me if it's meningitis. No, it's not meningitis. So cold. We'll get you some extra blankies when we get back to Queen Mary's. Why can't we stay at this hospital? I don't know. We just have to do what the doctors say. There's no easy way of saying this. Scans have revealed that your son has a brain tumor. That's impossible. You can see it in the pictures. Right in here. It's the size of an orange. You're wrong. You have to be wrong. It's all right. It's all right. Sorry. Sorry. Um, what are you going to do? I haven't seen a tumour quite like this one. And there isn't anyone here who can read the scans in greater depth. So we're going to send him to Great Ormond Street Hospital to see a neurologist. There's one thing I want to know, and I want to know it straight. Is Craig going to die? That is a possibility. It's bad, isn't it? We'll know more when they read the scans. Why didn't they read them last night? Why didn't they read them last night? Uh, well... Because that's the way they do things. Hey there, Shorty. Hey. Brought you something. Freshen up. Steve and I can take over for a while. Chelsea Football Club. Janie. Marion. How's Craig? Craig. Oh. Not so well. Could you send him a card? Yes. He'd really like that. Of course. Mrs. Shergold, the doctor will see you now. I've got to go.
Ernie, this man is going to save Craig's life. Love, you know we can't choose our own doctor. I know, but he's the one. Come in. Oh, good morning. I'm Dr. Middleton. So you were surprised? Yeah, very. I mean, there were a lot of doctors on that wall. And what about the reflection on the picture, the light? Uh, did you see anything? No. Is it possible that, that Marion could have known who the doctor was going to be? Maybe she overheard something, and this was just some sort of a joke? No. When the nurse and I came to get Marion, she was barely hanging on. By the time she met the doctor, she was different. You're going to save our son's life. Well, I'm certainly going to try. Please. I believe Dr. Belling told you that your son's condition is very serious. It, it's a brain tumor. Is it cancer? We don't know yet. The most immediate problem is the fluid building up around the tumor. If it remains unchecked, it could burst the cavity walls. Is that what feels like water in his ears? Yes, it also causes the earaches. So we have to drain this fluid before we can operate. This afternoon, I'll be inserting a shunt into Craig's brain. And when would you operate on the tumor? Well, if he survives the next few days and he gains strength quickly, we could operate next week. And then he'd be cured? The tumor is in a difficult position. It's in the midbrain. Now, this area controls a lot of different functions, vision, speech, hearing, appetite control. Any or all of these functions could be affected by the surgery. It is possible that Craig could be paralyzed, assuming, of course, that he survives the operation at all. He will survive, because God will be guiding your hands. Mrs. Shergirl, it's good to have faith, but please, you must be realistic. Shunt, please. Thank you. No wonder he had earaches. Hmm. Another 24 hours, he would have had no chance. Let's hope this boy is strong. Now, I'd like you to grab hold of my finger, please. That's all right. Now squeeze, as hard as you can. Really hard. Good. The post. This keeps up. You'll have to get your own postman. Chelsea. Are you a football fan? No, uh, cricket, actually. I played for university. I still play, believe it or not. <laughs> can I help you, Craig? No, I can do it. He likes to do it all by himself. <gasps> they signed it. Chelsea's the best. My dad and I see every home game. I think I better sleep before I open the next one.
We're going to have to postpone the operation, I'm afraid. Uh, what about the tumor? I thought you said it was still growing. Yes, it is. Yes. But this is a long operation. And at this point, Craig couldn't survive. There must be something you can do, some medication you can give him. We're doing everything we can, everything medically possible. Now, the rest has to come from Craig. Determination, inspiration, whatever you want to call it, that has to come from him. I don't know why I went into the chapel that day. I'd never been in before. But as I was praying, I realized that I had to do something with the cards. Okay, hold on tight. Okay, that's good. Cards. And everyone is a prayer for you to get well. Magic. Hey, why don't we go somewhere else to eat? You haven't had a decent meal in weeks. I have to get back to Craig. Love, you, you can't go on like this. You, you're sleeping in chairs. You're, you're living off sandwiches and chips. You, you, you need a proper meal and a good night's sleep. I have to stay with Craig. The doctors can take care of Craig. Like they did my mum. Love, your mum had cancer all through her body. There was nothing you could have done. There must have been something. There was nothing. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. You don't know that. And I don't know that. Dr. Middleton said that Craig needs inspiration. You should have seen his face when he looked at those cards. <laughs> what if that's the inspiration he needs? What if it makes a difference? Ernie was a saint. I couldn't have done it without him. He was working all day for London Electric. Then he'd go home, get the post. Sometimes he'd even cook dinner and bring it to the hospital. Then he'd play with Craig for a few hours and give me time to freshen up. How can you really win? He really was a saint. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. He's a quiet lamb. He likes to be cuddled. It's mine. Anytime you feel like singing, just cuddle your little lamb. My goodness. Look at all this. So many cards for one little boy. I have 212. Well, it's very impressive. You must have a lot of friends. I do. I have friends at school, friends at church, friends at soccer. And my mum knows everyone at the Chelsea Football Club. Hmm. You should be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I bet the Guinness Record's a thousand. Maybe two thousand. Oh, probably. 
Good. Now squeeze as hard as you can. Oh. That's very good. Now catch. Very good. My mum said all these cards are prayers. Do you think that's true? Well, I think that um, every single person who sent you a card wants you very much to get well, Craig. And I'll bet there are a lot of people praying for you who didn't send you cards. You think? Oh, yeah, sure of it. <laughs> He's definitely stronger. I wish we had more time, but we don't. So I'll schedule the operation for Wednesday. Now, anything you can do to get his spirits up, you know, give him the will to live, it could make a difference. Okay. Mommy, I'm scared. Everyone's scared before an operation. There's a waiting area down oh, the hall. Oh, Mummy! Yeah, I'm right here. The waiting area is down the hall. No, I want you to come with me. That's impossible. I'd only be in the way, darling. Can't have the doctor tripping over me, can we? Look, you've got your teddy. He's all ready to go. Dad, can you come in? Only doctors are allowed in the operating theater. The doctor's waiting. We've got to go. My son will go when he is ready. And Dr. Middleton would be the first one to tell you that. Dr. Middleton is just through that door. You like Dr. Middleton. And your dad and I are going to be right here. Yeah, every minute. If anyone needs us, we're right here. All right. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, too. See you in a bit, eh? What on earth is that? It's a teratoma. Is it invasive? I see no plane of separation between the tumor and the brain. Oh. Suction, please. Let's get this bloody thing out. How is he? He's alive. That's the most important thing. What does that mean? Is he blind? Paralyzed? Is he going to be all right? Well, we'll know a lot more tomorrow. Tonight is still touch and go. Thank you, Doctor. You must be absolutely knackered. Hmm. Excuse me. Stretch out in the waiting room. When you get tired, wake me up. All right. Mrs. Shergold, he won't wake up till morning. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? Yeah, I'll be all right. He's going to need you when he wakes up. 
I know. Do you know why we called you Craig? Because it means strong and enduring like a rock. And people do live up to their names. Look at your dad. His name means honest and sincere. When I was a little girl, we only had two rooms. One for eating and one for sleeping. Every Friday night, my dad would bring the tin bath in from the laundry room and we'd all take baths in front of the fire. And in summer, he'd bring home a big chunk of ice and he'd put it in the laundry room and all the families would cut a piece off to keep the milk cold. No matter what happened, you could always count on my dad. Do you remember how excited you were when Kylie was born? The minute you saw her, you loved her so much. That's the way your dad and Steve and I felt when you were born. We loved you so much. And I love you too. <laughs> Waterworks. Yeah. I dream that I floated out of my body and I was up in the air looking down at it. I could see all the doctors working. And then I went through a tunnel. At the end it was bright and Nanny was there. It was pretty. But they heard you calling me so I came back. Funny dream. Please, have a seat. It's bad news, isn't it? The tumor is very unusual. A teratoma. A uh, teratoma? Yes, it's actually a living thing. It has hair, nails, and teeth. Wait a minute. This thing is inside my son's brain? Yes. How did it get there? The tumors are usually congenital. We've never seen one in the brain before. They usually grow in the abdomen. Then you've made a mistake. No, you've got a very good look at it. I've managed to remove about 75%, but I was afraid to go deeper. It's in an area that controls important functions and it would have been too dangerous. This is crazy. Why didn't you tell us this last night? It would have seemed even crazier last night. And if Craig hadn't pulled through, you wouldn't have needed to know the specifics. This, uh, thing, will it grow back? Yes. Is it cancer? Yes. <sighs> so what are you going to do about it? I've contacted the Royal Marsden about chemotherapy. No! <laughs> it's where Marion lost her mother. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, then you know that chemotherapy can be very hard and that Craig will be very sick. Quite frankly, it's such a long shot, you might prefer not to put him through it. You mean just let him die? Doctor, I'm not going to let that happen. I waited for 10 years for Craig, and I'm not giving up now.
Dr. Middleton, my understanding is that teratomas are relatively rare. Oh, extremely rare. You had never seen one in the brain before? No, none of us had. Is it possible that this wasn't actually a teratoma? That it was something similar? No. Textbook teratoma. All of us saw it. Was there a biopsy? I thought you'd ask that. You know, we don't usually give out information of this kind, but Marion asked me to give you anything you wanted concerning Craig, so... It's a biopsy report. Who decided to start the chemotherapy? I did. Well, I made the suggestion and the showgirls agreed. How's my boy? He was sick again. Well, we knew that would happen, didn't we? We knew you'd be sick for a few days, then you'd feel better. He'll be up and down for a while. Mom, hmm? one of the sisters said that most of the children in this ward have cancer. Is that true? Yes. I hope it's not catching. I have enough with this brain tumor. No, it's not catching. And sometimes tumors are called cancer. Oh. All right, then. What was it Steve used to say for Kung Fu? I am the master. Right. And he went from the bottom of his class to the top in three months. I bet it can work for you. Come on. I am the master. I am going to win. Mom. I am the master of my body. Bad guys, get out. I am the master of my body. Bad guys, get out. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Shergill, I'm Ryan Phillips. The appeals director for the Royal Master. Oh, nice to meet you. And you must be Craig. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if I could get a photograph of your cards for the hospital newsletter. Yeah. Great. Wow. You do have a lot of cards, don't you? Well, all right then, Craig. On the count of three. One. Two. Three. That was terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not the Guinness record, but it's pretty good, isn't it? I'll be right back. One million two hundred and sixty-five. A million cards. That's impossible. We could never get that many. I think you could. You see, the Martin's about to begin its annual fundraising drive. Well, if we were to combine forces, cards for Craig, money for the Martin, I think that you could do it. But why would you want to do this? Well, because I think it would be good for the Martin. I heard a lot about Craig, and I saw how he lit up for the camera. The press will love him. Angel. Well, hold on. I want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. It's going to mean a staggering amount of work, both for you and for Craig. Public appearances, radio, television interviews. Oh, he'll love it. Well, then we'll need people to count, a place to count. You get the cards coming in, I'll do the rest. You do realize that you won't have any privacy at all. Everywhere you and Craig go, people will know who you are. Mr. Phillips, you're not going to put me off. My son needs a dream, and this is it. We're gonna break that record. This year, we have a double appeal. Cards for Craig, and money for the Marsden. Well, remember, every card you send will help Craig to achieve his dream. And every pound, every penny, will help Craig and thousands of children like him to get well. Thank you. So, you're a Chelsea fan? Yep, my mum used to work there until I got this brain tumour. But when it's cured, she'll go back. You know, I've known Bobby Campbell for years. Really? Hi. I've got his autograph. Oh, that's great. We hold it right there.
you really think we can do this? I think we can do anything we set our minds to. Good afternoon. Hello. Thank you all for coming. As you know, we're all here to help Craig break the Guinness record. Sorry, we're late. I had to study for my firefighter's exam. I hate to tell you this, but you hear so much. I don't think you'll ever catch up. We were just getting started. Uh, now, the boxes are color-coded. Blue for cards, green for money, yellow for stamps. Any questions? Well, all right then. Let's get started. What's that? Knock, knock. Who's there? Adair. Adair who? Adair once, but now I'm born. <laughs> <laughs> you see him now, it's hard to believe that tomorrow he'll need help sitting up. Chemo's tough. Thank God he has the cards. Announcement. We have now opened 500,000 cards. Craig is halfway there and there's no end in sight. Steve worked for those exams. You acted like it was nothing. I told him I was proud of him. And then you made an announcement about Craig. What? You think I should have made an announcement about Steve? Those people were there to open cards, to break the Guinness record. They're not interested in Steve. Sometimes I wonder if you are. I wonder if you're interested in anything except those bloody cards. Craig, all right? Yeah. I came to see you. I know the past few months have been very hard, but Craig is a little boy, and he needs me. If this had happened to you when you were little, I would have done exactly the same thing. You can't blame me. I'm not blaming you, Mum. I love Craig. We all love Craig. I have a toddler it now, right? A new job. I was counting on you now. And you can't. I, I can understand that. It's just hard. It's very, very hard. It's hard on all of us.
Hello? It's Dr. Middleton. He's better, isn't he? Can you come by? I'd like to talk to you. The myelography shows that the cancer has traveled to Craig's spine. That can't be right. He's so much better. He's only sick after the chemo. Would you like to see? There's one definite tumor and three probable tumors, all in the lower lumbar region. So the chemotherapy's not working? No, it hasn't accomplished what we'd hoped. What are you going to do? We can try radiotherapy, although I can't guarantee any results, and the side effects are quite severe. Craig would lose his coordination, his speech would slur, and he'd lose his appetite. He'd have no rest and recovery periods the way he does with chemotherapy. He'd have radiation treatment every day. So what's the alternative? You could take him home. And if you could afford it, you could take him to the seaside. Make sure his last few months... I don't want to hear that. Now, tell me about the radiation so that I can explain it to Craig. Very well. Marion. Oh, I see you've heard about Guinness. What about Guinness? Well, they called this afternoon. They won't accept a new card record. Apparently, the last people who tried this had a nervous breakdown. Uh, well, I'm not them, am I? I'm not going to have a nervous breakdown. I'm going to break their bloody record. Marion, please. Well, even if we do, they won't recognize it. Maybe it's for the best. Craig should be in bed, not traipsing all over town. Let me see if I can get an advance on my salary. We'll take him down to Little Hat. Marion! Marion! They won't accept a new card record. Well, they can't do that. They said that if we continue on like this, we're all going to have nervous breakdowns. Card record. You're wrong, and I intend to prove it. You tell them, Mum. This is a public book about the public, responsible to the public. And I am the public. We are the public. Yes. I will not let them tell me what I can and cannot do. I am not giving up when I'm halfway there. I am going to smash their record and set the new one. Are you with me? Yes. What do you think you're doing? There is no point to this if Craig can't get the record. He needs this. What, this circus? It's not even about Craig anymore, it's about you. Did you hear yourself? I am the public, I am halfway there. What, do, do you think that if you make yourself really busy, you won't see what's happening to Craig? What, what we are doing to him? Or do you love the, the spotlight so much that you don't care what happens to Craig anymore? You know, you've got to face the fact that Craig is dying. And he needs rest, not publicity. He needs a dream. Dr. Middleton said Dr. that. Dr. Middleton has given up. He doesn't know Craig like I do. Craig is a fighter. He can beat this thing, but not if you put him in a bed and tell him he's dying. Craig believes what we tell him, and thousands of people are telling him to get better. He knows those cards are prayers, and I know that they're keeping him alive while God makes him better. I'm not going to let Guinness or anyone else take that away. And how did Ernie feel about the radiation? We both wanted what was best for Craig. And you still believe the doctors could cure Craig? I believed in Dr. Middleton. Hold still, Craig. Now take this off. 
What are you going to do with this? Well, now we make a plastic mask from this and we put little marks on it to make sure the radiation goes in exactly the right place. It's bloody well better after all this work. <laughs> <laughs> this is Shergold. All of us on the Guinness Committee agree. It isn't as if Craig actually did anything. He only received cards. You think that television interviews and personal appearances and hours and hours and hours of opening cards is nothing? Well, my son works a lot harder than you and he's got a brain tumor. The ruling has been made. But it's wrong! With your reasoning, a politician shouldn't get credit for votes because he only receives them. Are you telling me that you won't give my son credit for this? But if he went into a car park and sat on a pole for three days, then he could be in your book? Yes, well, that's certainly the type of record we'd have to consider. <sighs> well, Mr. Guinness Record, you've got your priorities all wrong. How dare they suggest my son has done nothing? You've seen how hard he works, and you know how much money he's raised for this hospital. When we break that record, and we will, Guinness might not print it, but I hope you will. I swear, you'll end up a member of parliament. Nah, I'm just a mom. Ryan, what was it about Craig that captured the hearts of so many people? Well, he was outgoing, photogenic. But isn't that the definition of a poster child? You do these appeals every year. I'm sure the children are always cute. So what was it about Craig that was different? Well, he, he seemed almost prescient. What do you mean? The doctors always talked about um, remission, trying to prolong his life. But Craig always talked about a cure. Well, you got the feeling it, it was almost like he'd already seen the future. That he was just waiting for this to play out until he could get back to his life. And yet he was only eight years old. Craig, these pills are just to relax you. I don't need them. We always use them for the children. He says he doesn't need them. This fits. I need just a minute. I am most of my body bad guys get out. I'm ready now. Looks like they've made the right decision about the radiology. The tumors on the spine have cleared. Oh, that's oh. wonderful news. <laughs> Steady on. Let's not get too excited. The tumor on the brain is unchanged. Unchanged means not growing. <laughs> Deadlines in 30 minutes. That's it. One more, Craig. Richard Gear.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Craig Shergold has smashed the Guinness record of 1,265 cards. The new record is 1,016,240 cards, and there's no end in sight. Surprise for Craig. On behalf of the Guinness Book of World Records, I present the certificate to Craig Shogo. They called this afternoon. I wanted it to be a surprise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Everybody who... There's no easy way to say this. He's not. No, no. Well, the tumor's on the move again. It's just a matter of time. How long? Two or three weeks. Possibly four. Couldn't you operate again? No. He's far too weak. But you have to remember that it's the quality of life that counts, and you've given Craig... Sod the quality of life. I want my son alive. We've done everything we can now. He will seem to get better when we stop the radiation. His speech will clear and his coordination will improve, but really it's, it's just a matter of time. Why don't you take him home? Will he be in pain? When the time comes, we'll give him morphine. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. these things. Why don't you just throw them away? That's my boy. I better know the radiation's done. See you after work, eh? I'll open them when we have time, right?
It's okay. It's from a doctor in America. He wants to see you. I knew something would happen. I knew it. Marion, hello. How's Craig? Not so well. Oh. There's a doctor in Virginia who wants to see him. A Dr. Neil Cassell? Ah, oh, yes. He's a fine doctor. I need Craig's records to take with us. Marion, I hate to see you drag Craig halfway around the world. There's nothing they can do for him in Virginia that we can't do here. Believe me, if anything could be done, we'd do it. They have a new treatment, something called a gamma knife. Ah, oh, yes. It's a large, cumbersome instrument. Dr. Middleton, I'm not giving up. I still believe Craig can be cured. Well, another operation would be very risky, you know, very. But if that's what you want, if you're sure, then I'm willing to do it. You've done your part. You already saved his life once. Now it's time for the Americans. Lisa. Yes, Doctor? Would you prepare copies of Craig Shergold's records, please? Mrs. Shergold will be in to pick them up immediately. Thank you. I wish you all the luck in the world. Please give my love to Craig. Oh, and uh, give him that. I will. Thank you. Ernie, we're going to America. You out of your mind. We can't afford to go to America. We don't have to pay for anything. An American billionaire is paying for everything. Look. Marion, what have you done? I told you God would find a way. Marion. This morning, you tossed a letter into the rubbish. One letter. When I picked it up, I saw that light. The same light I saw in Dr. Middleton's picture. Yeah, well, he didn't cure Craig, did he? It's from a doctor in America, a Dr. Neil Cassell. We don't know anything about this doctor. Dr. Middleton does. Listen to what happened. Mr. Kluge, the billionaire, was reading about Craig's appeal, and he decided to send him a card. Then he felt God tap him on the shoulder and tell him, you should do more. So he called his friend, Dr. Neil Cassell. Love, it sounds like a wild goose chase. It's not fair to Craig. How much proof do you need? Can't you see that God is helping us? Dad, Dad, it's I'm telling you, we're going to America. America! <laughs> Had a good trip? Yes, thanks. Mama scared of the plane. Oh? What about you? Nah, they built to fly, aren't they? Indeed they are. Well, as I told you on the telephone, we have a new treatment for brain tumors. It's an instrument called the gamma knife. What exactly does that do? It fires high energy radiation beams directly into the brain. With some tumors, the gamma knife can hit the tumor today and the patient can walk out tomorrow with no need for further radiation treatments. And you think you can do this for Craig? I certainly hope so. First, we'll have to run a series of tests. You'll be familiar with most of them, eye and coordination tests, brain scans. And I need to run an arteriogram because I want to find out if the tumor is feeding off of a blood vessel. If it is, we can cut off the blood supply, reduce the size of the tumor, so we can use the gamma knife. And if it isn't? We'll worry about that when we get the results of the tests. Do you have any questions? Do you know you're not wearing socks? I never wear socks. Uh, 
Craig, I'm going to want you to tell me what you see. It's going to be an E. It's always an E. Okay. It's an S. S is in sneaky. S is in smart. Smart enough to know you'd have the E memorized. Well, I got it right anyway, didn't I? Yes, you did. All right, Craig, we need you to be very still. Good boy. How you doing in there? It's bloody cold. Colder than London. At least it's not raining. Or snowing. How far along are you? The catheter is approaching the neck, and I'm about to inject the dye. I just hope this thing is feeding off an artery. The tumor is not feeding off of a blood vessel, and it's far too large to use the gamma knife. It's about five centimeters in diameter, and the gamma knife is only really effective for tumors up to three centimeters. I wish I'd seen him sooner. There must be uh, something you can do. You can't just let him die. I suppose I could operate. If we can reduce the size of the tumor, then perhaps we'd be able to use the gamma knife later on. But the risks would the be... Risks are what? Well, I'd say there's about a 20% chance that he'd die on the operating table. And if he didn't die, the operation could leave him blind, or deaf, or in a coma. But if it's a success, then he'd be good. I wish I could offer you that hope, but I'm afraid I can't. Realistically, I think the most we can give him is another six to nine months. Is there any alternative? No. Then we have to do it. Marion, we can't. When would you want to do it? Well, if you decide that you want this procedure, we should do it immediately, tomorrow morning. But I want you to think about it very carefully. Read the consent forms. Think about it. Talk about it. Is this a risk you really want to take? I can't do it. I can't let another doctor hack into our son. And look what we've done to him. The body's full of tubes. We've let doctors cut into him, burn his insides with chemicals, and for what? For nothing. This operation can save him. That's what you said about the last one. Dr. Middleton was going to save him. And he did. Craig would have died without that operation. The chemotherapy and the radiation and the gamma knife. You heard what Dr. Cassell said. The most he can offer Craig is nine more months of pain. What about the light? <sighs> and the dream? And Mr. Kalugi, he felt God tap him on the shoulder. When I first had that dream, I knew there was something wrong. And you said it was nothing. And then when Craig had his earaches, I knew there was something wrong. And you said, listen to the doctors. Well, I'm not listening to the doctors. I'm listening to me. And I know he can get well. Please. Are you so sure that God won't save him? Are you so sure? You won't even give him a chance. Craig, darling. Your dad and I need to talk to you. We have a very important decision to make. What did the doctor say? Right now, your tumor is too big for the gamma knife. If Dr. Cassell operates, he might be able to cut it down and use the gamma knife later. But he can't promise anything. Doctors never promise. The operation is very dangerous. And there's a possibility you could die. I won't die, I promise. You could end up in a coma. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I've seen them on telly. If that happened, would you blame us? 
No, I could never blame you. I'd blame the cancer. Remember the last operation, how much pain you were in? Do you want to go through all that again? No pain, no gain. It's up to you, Craig. Do you want the operation? Yeah, I like the doctor. Is it soon? The doctor wants to do it tomorrow morning. Can Dad stay with me tonight? Mom, I love you very much, but you worry. You'll be touching me all night, asking me if I'm okay, and I need to sleep. <sighs> of course, darling. <laughs> Dr. Cassell. Mrs. Shergo, you have a package from London. I'll have Ernie bring it in. Good morning, darling. I had a long talk with the doctor. He said he's going to cut through the top of my head instead of the back. It's more difficult, but it gives him a better angle. I'm sure he'll do whatever's best. The orderlies are on their way up. Already? Are you scared? A little bit. I'll be asleep. I won't know about it. Don't worry, Mum. I won't die. Are you ready to go? Mr. Shergold, I will need you to sign this. Everybody, are we ready? Okay, let's turn on the cameras. The uh, patient is prepped. This is Dr. Neil Cassell at the University of Virginia. The patient is an eight-year-old male. His name is Craig Shergold. Craig has a malignant tumor in the pineal region. He's undergone previous surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Our goal is to debulk the tumor so that we can use the gamma knife and prolong his life. Okay, let's go. Wait here. Let's put up some cards. As we approach the tumor, we're seeing a great deal of scar tissue, the result of previous surgery and radiation. That's interesting. Mm, I'm retracting the tissue. Would you hold it right there, please? Thank you. We're seeing something white, shiny, about five centimeters in diameter. May I please have the scalpel and the forceps? Thank you. Hmm, doesn't cut. Look at the plane of separation. Hmm. Looks like we're going to have to chip it away. So many people are praying for him. God has to listen. We've got enough. I can get more. It's too dangerous. Retract the tissue, please. A little further. 
Thank you. And further. I'm tall. Suction. We have to find the site of hemorrhage. We're losing a lot of blood. Bipolar cautery. We're not going to lose him. Follow me, please. How is he? I don't know. I need a promise. No matter how good he feels, for the next six months, keep him off the football field. Are you saying he's cured? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You. We chipped away over 90% of the tumor, and I don't believe the rest will be a problem. Uh, it, it's not malignant? No. We suspected that when we discovered that it was made of a pearl-like substance, and the biopsy confirmed it. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, how can a teratoma become a pearl? That is a very good question. I can't tell you why we found what we found, but I can tell you that Craig is an exceptional patient. I knew that the day I met him. Doctor? Yes? Something strange happened to the videotapes. At the moment of the first incision, about three minutes into the tapes, they all go black. Uh, that's not possible. They're all on separate circuits. We uh, checked them twice. Would you excuse me, please? I'm so proud of you. I'm gonna think about football now. Okay. I'm gonna become a pearl. And, and what's happened to the tapes? I mean, how can they all go black if they're on separate circuits? Only when God performs a miracle, you don't ask how, you just give thanks. Craig, what are you going to do now? I'm going to grow my hair back. <laughs> what do you think of Dr. Cassell? Reggie, what are you doing here? God, would you believe me if you're in there knock-knock jokes? It's a shame you can't come with us to the airport. Not to worry, we're on the same flight. Come on, we're going to miss the plane. Bye. I'm going to enjoy watching that boy grow up. Take it easy. I'm sick. Mr. Sherman, 
Shergold, do you believe God saved your son? Yes, I do. Mrs. Shergold, why do you think God saved him? I believe that God wanted to show the world that if we all work together, we can still create miracles. So, Craig, what do you think about all this? Well, it all happened the way it was supposed to. Didn't it? Did it? I think it did. Well, thank you so much. I've got my story, and I know what I'm going to call it. Miracle in Virginia. Oh, you missed the point. It wasn't Virginia. It was the entire world.